welcome to Property Guru. So the first presentation we have is on iOS automation, XEUI test plus Gherkin. So I'm, my name is Kenneth and I'm an iOS engineer here at Property Guru. So I like Agile, Extreme Programming. And here at PG, we write a lot of tests. In fact, just in our iOS repository, we have more than thousands of tests in our repo. So my automation journey started with Calabash iOS, and we have now moved over to actually UI test. So the codes mentioned in the slides can be found in this GitHub link. So a show of hands, how many people in the room are testers, QA? No. Oh, okay. um, developers? All right, cool. So how many developers write unit tests? Cool. What about UI automation tests? All right, cool. So for those who, who have not started writing any automation tests, I hope this presentation will inspire you to go back and start writing for your own projects. So the agenda for today, I'll give a quick introduction to actually UI test. And based on a couple of requirements, we will attempt to write, I will handhold you guys, and we will attempt to write actually UI test cases. Next. After that, I'll be introducing the Gherkin language and how we can bring this tool to actually UI test. So actually UI test is an out-of-the-box test automation tool introduced in Xcode last year. Then the way you write, you write tests is by querying the elements and subviews of the main app window. Actually UI test uses the actually test framework which generally follows the X-Unit test patterns, where you would have test case, test case classes, set up teardown methods, and use exergence. When we run actually UI tests, we build, install the test target app, plus the test runner. The test runner will launch, will launch the app and query the elements on screen. And the UI test targets cannot see the production codes at all. So for, for this kind of testing, we are doing black box testing. So there's no way of using mocks. We can't use OC mocks or mocking J in our UI test. So one cool feature of XE UI test is the record functionality. So here's an example. So let's start off with the bottom, the record button at the, at the bottom. So when you tap the record button and as we interact with the app, Xcode will generate the code for you. Okay, one more time. Tapping on the record button, interact with the with the field, and Xcode will generate the code for you. So Am I? So the components in actually UI test are mainly actually UI elements. So from Apple's documentation, elements are objects encapsulating the information needed to dynamically locate a user interface element in an application. Elements are described in terms of the queries. So first we have actually UI application. It is the object that queries the views and the subviews on the app. And we can use static text, which returns a collection of UI labels. Buttons return UI buttons. Tables will, will return a uh, collection of UI tables, querying the collection of UI tables. So we can chain the queries together by using, for example, app.tables.static text. So this returns UI labels which have super views on an, or ancestor views of type UI table. And we can, we can filter the queries by using the identifier. For example, app.static text returns a label element with the accessibility label or text value hello world. App.table, my table, returns a UI table element with accessibility label my table. So here are the other um, XEU elements that the API provides. So as you can see, there is windows, sheets, um, probably UI action sheets, buttons. We have keys, we have toggles, and if we can also use the last one, 
at the other elements. And this returns anything, the subviews of anything that is of subtype UI, UI view. So now that we know about the elements, how about the interactions? So we can take we can take an element and invoke dot exist, and this returns true if the element exists on screen. With the buttons, we can tap. We can also swipe up on the table, and if we have an input field, we can use type text, and that will enter the fields, just like the the demo, the little GIF file that we saw enter the values into the text field. Other interactions include pinch to scale, press for duration, and double tapping. So we can combine this with assertions. So app.statictext, hello world.exist, true. This throws an exception if the label doesn't exist on screen. So now, now that you have some idea what the API can do, um, let's go ahead and, and write our very first XCUI test case. So, so given these requirements, I create an app, given that I'm at the city search screen. When I search for a valid city, London, then I should see weather details page of that city. Number two, given I am at the city search screen, when I search for an invalid city, let's say a string called not the city, then I should see an error message. So I'll show you what we have built so far. So we tap. So this is the example of the app. We tap on the search field. We tap London. And then this is the details page. All right. So, so the second one. Sorry. So this is the second part. So we type not the city and we just get we call it the API and we get an error message. Okay. To start off, we will need to create our, our UI test target. So take note it starts off with the plus sign at the bottom. So tap on the plus sign. First, we need to create our test target. We select a UI testing bundle. With that, we have our first test target. And that will also create the test case, test case class for us. So one more time, adding a UI test target bundle. This will, this will generate our UI test target. As well as our XC test case class. Okay. So, so far, so good. Very simple. So now we will, rec we will now record the test case for our very first requirement for a valid city. So, so this is the test method, we tap on record. Now we open up the app. And we, as we type, you can see Xcode will now generate the code for us. We type London. Tap on the search button, and now we have the weather details. And notice that we are tapping on each of the UI labels. One more time. Press on the record button. We launch the app. We perform the actions, and Xcode will generate the corresponding actions in Xcode. So when I tap on the search field, then we tap on London, type London, tap on the search button, and we tap on the UI labels. So one important tip here is that 
you may want to click on the elements during the recordings because Xcode will help to generate the statements that you may want that you may have to use later. So for the invalid city, quick one. Very simple. So now we launch the app. And we type an invalid city here. We query the API. And now we have an error message. Again, we tap on the error and the error message. And after that, we close the alert, the alert, alert sheet. Okay. So now let's look at the generated codes. So what we have here, app because of app 2. Definitely, this is something not correct. And now, with assuming app is the represent the object that queries the views on the screen. <coughs> so now we have we look for search fields, where we filter by the identifier such as city. As you can guess, as you can guess, it's probably the text used as the placeholder. We tap on it, and after that, if you can reimagine the whole the whole UI flow, we are supposed to type in London into the search field, but here again it's missing. Next, we actually, we query for the buttons, and we, we filter by the search string, then this represents the keyboard search button, and then we tap. So the lower part, we actually query the table for the static text, which is the UI labels, and we look for London 53 and partly cloudy, and we tap. So as you can see, when you use the record functionality, Xcode may not always generate the desired, desired codes for you. And in this case, the codes for typing the search string is actually missing. <coughs> so here for, gen for the invalid city, now at least here is better, we have actually your application object. So we, again, we get the search field, tap it. Uh, we are supposed to type in the invalid city. We tap, click, tap on the search bu keyboard button, and the later part, what happens is that we, we tap on the error, and the error message, as well as closing the, the alert action sheet. So of course, some things are not uh, well done over here, so let's go ahead and refactor the codes. So for the first test case, we have app equals to XUI application, we get the search field, after that, we, we tap on it, we use, the, we use the method type text, where we enter London into the search field. After that, we tap on the search button. So here we have a private function where we, where we use, um, we create expectations using a predicate, and we wait for five, five second timeout. We evaluate whether this is true. So for this portion, after five seconds, if London, 53 and partly cloudy, cloud, cloudy doesn't appear on screen after five seconds, the test case will, the test case test method will throw an exception and fail the test. So this is a pattern you will see um, later in the slides, which I will use to wait for wait to assert that something appears on screen. <coughs> So for the invalid city, we have same thing, app because application, we get the search field, we tap on it, we enter the value using type, uh, type text, and then we tap on the search button. And again, we use the, the helper function, user waits to, to see text, we have error, unable to, and then we wait to see, unable to find any uh, weather location to the query submitted. Once we created the expectation, wait for five seconds. And next, we have user taps on alert button. So the private function we have here simply application dot buttons pass in the string and the tap. So as you can see here, we didn't really do much. We simply fill in the blank for the missing in and or incorrect codes, and then we organize them a bit. So it's pretty simple to use. So here is scheme management. So you can use Scheme to manage your test by opening up Scheme Management, go to Test, 
And over here, you can see the test target, the test class, and the test methods. You can decide which test to run for which scheme. And in that way, this allows you to build test, build test against just one test target, and, but you can use different schemes to decide which test you want to run. For example, I may have a scheme that selects all the test cases, and I can call it regression test. Or I can have a scheme that selects the priority or the very important, a subset of the very important test cases, and call it priority smoke test. Or, what, or having one scheme, select those that I can run locally, or and, adapt, and different schemes to run tests against different environments. So of course, um, changing environments require you to change the API target in your app. So if you want to change which environment you want to run your app, you can use the scheme. You can do go to the build pre-action. And if you have a configuration file, you can actually uh, create a run script and do your modification here. Uh, if you simply use plist, you can use plist body and change the values. So of course, if you're, if you're going to use um, configuration in your iOS app, just remember to encrypt your configuration file before you package it into your .app or IPA file. So, first part done, actually UI test. So next, Gherkin. If you, do, if you guys don't know what Gherkin is, this is an example of a, Gherkin, of a feature file written in Gherkin. So Gherkin is a human readable syntax used to construct acceptance test cases usually used in BDD, behavior driven development. So the key words in Gherkin are feature. So feature describes like describes what the XC test case will do. If I were to do the ma mapping, scenario describes the test method, and below scenario are the Gherkin steps, mainly given, when, and then. So today we will focus on the three steps given given some precondition, or given that I'm at a particular screen, when, 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 some, when the user has performed an action on the app, then we do some checking or we do some assertions. So for given, again, given that some preconditions have been met or the user has, is currently at this particular screen, when the, when the user has performed some actions on the app, then we do some checking or assertions. So just give some, some example. Example, if you are at the user registration screen, given I'm at the user registration page, when I enter invalid email address, I tap register, then I should see invalid email address. So another example, assuming I'm doing shopping and I have, exist, and I have existing items in my shopping cart, so given I have one wallet, one belt in my shopping cart, and I am at the shopping item details page for a bag, when I select quantity as one and, and I tap on add to shopping cart, I should see the I should be at the shopping cart screen and I should see three total items in my shopping cart. So now for our own acceptance test. Good. Given I am at the weather search form page. When I see cities, when I enter city search for London, then I should be I should be at the weather details page, and I wait to see London, and I wait to see 53. 53, I think, is the humidity. So for invalid test, uh, invalid city test, given I, that I am at the weather search form page when I enter city search for not the city, then I wait to see error message. I wait to see unable to error unable to message and I tap on alert button OK. So Gherkin is a language used in behavior driven development to specify software requirements with examples. So this, this English written file is executable and because it's easily read by non-technical people, you can facilitate collaboration with your, your QA your product owners as well. So now let's try to add Gherkin into our Xcode project by using this port, actually test Gherkin. So this is what we want to achieve. 
In our test case file, we want to specify the given when then in this, in this way. After that, we will create a subclass of step definer. And we override the defined steps. And then we put our, defi our definition of our steps over here. So the step definer will evaluate the given when steps mentioned in the actually test. So let's go step by step. First one, given that I am at the search form page, so the step I will create is given I am or should be at the weather search form page. And, what, and here I will create a search, for, search page struct. And in the initialization of the struct, <laughs> initialization of the struct, we will wait to see whether this element exists on the on the page. So after five seconds, if we once we run this step and we create a struct, after five seconds, if this identifier is not found, um, the test method will throw an exception. So. If you're wondering where sh I, I don't see this screen don't this, this string in our app just now, where should I put it? You can actually go to the view controller view did load method and we and you enter self dot view dot accessibility identifier equal to this string. So next. So when I enter city search for London, so I create the test the step for I, I enter CD search for rejects and we create a weather search page and then we create a function user search for CD and pass in the argument and in this method we actually copied the, the statements that we created earlier on and we, what we do is we create a XEO application object we get the search field, tap on it and we enter the Enter the city in, and we tap on the search but on the search keyboard button. So the next part, I should be at weather details page. Here, I would create, uh, I will initialize the weather details page struct. Notice that I use both M and should be, so that for similar for, I can use this statement for both at the given and at the then uh, when I use the then steps. So similarly for this struct. When we initialize, we look for weather forecast, which is on the navigation bar title, weather forecast. So the next one, I wait to see London. So this part is very simple. I wait to see rejects. And then we have, we, we use the wait uh, expectation again. We wait for static text that matches the argument. We wait for five seconds. So the last part. Uh, then I tap on alert button, okay. Actually, your application, the buttons, and we tap on the, the, the button. So if, so if I, if I cannot locate the button, this statement will fail, and it will fail the whole test case. So let's see our finished finish product. We have our search page. So this is a struct. This is the function that we created. And if you want to, um, I found a, a, a port which is called Gem Test Helper. And so you can actually reduce this into, you don't have to specify the predicates and stuff. And you simplify your statement to this. So next, this is the weather details page struct. Same thing. So now we wait for, we look for the, the static text weather forecast. And here are the steps. So I create different subclasses of step definer. I put all the navigational steps like and navigation assertion steps, given that I am here uh, at the search form page or at the details page. And these are the steps. This is for the home page that you saw when I enter CT search for a particular string. So I have another class which is for wait steps. So here I put the I wait to see rejects. And here is the alert steps, uh, basically interaction with the with the alert alert box. So finally, this is how our our actually UI test look, look like. 
So here is the given when then. So you can see we actually extract the codes from um, we extract the implementation implementation codes from the test method. And if in fact you can actually the, uh, in this port you can actually run directly run using the feature file over here. So so why should I use GERKI with XUI test? Firstly, um, it facilitates acceptance test driven design. You can work with your QA, your product owner. They can fill out the features for you. In fact, you want them to specify the features as a test case, hook it up to your, your continuous integration process, and then ask the developers to code to get, it, get them to pass. And once we, in PG, in our team, we actually ask the PO to write and commit the files into GitHub before we start writing any code. So this also allows you allows cross-platform testing without the need for third-party tools. So for example, if you're if you're doing iOS or Android development, you you basically only need the feature files to bind the same requirements on both uh, platforms together. For the for example, for the Android programming, you can use uh, for Android testing. You can use uh, maybe Appian or Calabash, but for iOS, you don't need any uh, special third-party tools. Hence, all your coding is done in Objective-C Swift. You don't need to learn Ruby just to use Calabash. So that's the one major advantage. So, so any questions? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I have two. Uh, first one is Step Definer. Is it from Gilkin? Yes, yes. So, um, so this so the tool that runs Gherkin is mainly um, Cucumber, written in Ruby. So they have um, they have broken down how to actually write it, how to write your test in English. Yeah. And for each one, for each um, um, statement, yeah. you would write the underlying implementation for pl platform specific. Yeah, so you were subclassing from Step Definer. That Step Definer came from? Uh, came from the, the party port, the ah, proper port, okay. yeah. The yeah, so for this presentation, it's kind of long. Okay. I actually had slides that explain under the hood how it, how it works, but I think that part might bore quite a lot of people, so I took it out. Right. Uh, my second question is, have you reached a, a scenario where you even you couldn't test, you, you actually hit a wall? Hit a wall? Yeah, um, sometimes, as you can see, when we create record some UI, um, some flows, and somehow the recording Xcode doesn't give you the exact statement and it's wrong. So I hit a big wall and try to find out how do I query complex UI within complex UI within complex UI. So sometimes um, that's a problem I hit. Um, other than that, nothing else. You can, um, actually UI test you can easily run on your, on your device. Um, as well, so you can actually test this against um, like thirty-two bit architecture phone, sixty-four bit. Yeah. Um, any more questions? Uh, can you use Frank? Uh, uh, no, I've not used so. so I, one of the things that I um, noticed, I haven't used XUI just that much, but I've used Frank mostly. Mm -hmm. Um, so the query uh, for the query, they used accessibility identifier. Yeah, correct. Um, so you can. Put an accessibility identifier for literally any um, new component. Right? That's correct. Uh, the thing with XE UI test, I think, is um, for some of the things like search skill or um, things or label, it mm -hmm. uses the name of the label or uh, the bit, Yeah, text. correct, correct. So how 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 many uh, or how much you need to modify if you have to write automation test for multiple languages, for example? <laughs> if you have localization. Um, would you create multiple feature files for each of the languages, or the same feature file? The same feature file will not work because the text will be different in different languages, right? Yeah. So, it, I think this part for uh, for localization. I think this part um, you would do the extraction not outside, uh, like in your schemes. When you choose the scheme, for for example, I'm running this app in English. I would I would do. In, in in the in the for example the Gherkins file you will not use the exact string you will use a kind of a placeholder ID that you use to map 
into your in, into the specific word in that context. And you will do this matching actually outside running of the test case. So that's why I mentioned the scheme. So that's how you can do a bit more complex stuff. Like if you want to set up complex features, you might also want to consider using a scheme. So just using, just running actually the running the test method may not be sufficient enough to run your test, especially if you need complex setup. Any more? Go ahead, fellow uh, teammate. Uh, is it possible to use the, uh, the test recorder, but instead of uh, generating the code, uh, we generate uh, working uh, steps inside? No, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Maybe next time. Uh, I don't know. For now, I don't see it's possible because it's quite limited to what Apple has created in the in the API. Is not part of yeah. So Gherkin is just a it's a testing tool, uh, How how you want to, to run to make your test your, your stuff. How how you actually want to work with your people outside the engineering department. That's what I can say. Uh, another question. Uh, from your experience, how maintainable is the, the generated code from the test recorder? Um, if you just take it straight off, quite poor. Because you can see there's a lot of duplication. You, you can't just depend on it. Whether I use that as a quick way to find out, like... Because sometimes when, I, when we build apps, we have complex UIs nested with, it, with each other. Uh, by clicking, it just helps me to to query for the elements, if it's possible. Easily grab the elements. And of course, after that, you do a refactoring and you make, you probably want to make, create helper methods to make your life easier. Yeah, you cannot always de depend on the recording tool. One more question. So what would be the flow when uh, there's a change in the requirement and your previously written test now have to be uh, changed in a way? Would you use a test recorder for this again or would you just change the test code now? Actually, it really depends. If I, if I happen to create a new, a new UI label, I would, use, I would just quickly do a quick one through and click on the label just to find out how to, if I can easily access it, and then change the test. I would not completely depend on using the recorder. Any more tests? Uh, any more questions? Okay, so, yeah. Um, so I, I hope you guys have gotten a good picture on how to use XCUI test plus Gherkin. Uh, any of you need help or tips to kickstart um, automation in your in your personal work or company work, feel free to, to buzz me later or via my email. Thank you. So I hand over to Subansu. Um, so we have two more questions. Uh, one is from 